from the UK. Now, we were just together in Copenhagen for the Bilderberg meeting this year, and we're going to be joined in the third hour by with uh, Richie Allen, and we're going to be talking about his take. He's also British, and we're going to be talking about his take on Bilderberg and how it was different this year, and we're going to share some of our some of the things that we saw there together. But uh, before we get to that, we've been talking about journalism and free press, and there's a lot of things happening this week. You know, uh, later this week, tomorrow is the 25th anniversary of the Chinese government cracking down at Tiananmen Square, pushing back against the people who are demonstrating there, the students who are demonstrating for their freedom. Uh, the day after that is the uh, one-year anniversary of the Snowden leaks, and so there are some groups on the Internet that are going to be holding a uh, a rally uh, uh, to try to get people to be aware that they need to do things to protect their own privacy. And as we were talking about this, it's not just the Tiananmen Square students. We had Andrew Demeter, someone who has uh, is no stranger to those who watch the Paul Revere contest or uh, follows Infowars, a 16-year-old. Now, he was in uh, a position where he was able to directly ask Nancy Pelosi a question, and he got to ask her what about the Fourth Amendment and the NSA? And she just started fumbling all over herself. Paul, when we were abroad, I, you know, looking at the different ways that uh, police interact with people and then going through all the hassles that we went through to come back into this country, I saw this article today about more U.S. citizens turning in their passports. They said 1,001 U.S. citizens gave up their citizenship in just the first quarter of this year, more than the total in 2012, and already about a third of 2013 is record-breaking 3,000. Now, this article from the Washington Examiner is focusing on the financial aspects of it, but I think it has to do with the entire perspective, the loss of privacy. And there's another article that's come out about how this new uh, financial database uh, that's and bureauc bureaucracy, sorry, that uh, Dodd-Frank created, they are now going to start collecting virtually everything in the open from about 227 million Americans, looking at every mortgage going back to, I believe it was uh, 1998, and every bit of supporting information about you and your household, demographic and personal. That's what I think a lot of reason a lot of people are leaving America because they're worried about not just the money that's being confiscated, but the police state. Well, the, the fact that more data is being kept than ever before is a given. But the ultimate scandal, of course, with the NSA is going to turn out to be that not just metadata, but distinct conversations, specific details about people's bank accounts, their online chats, um, every single shred of communication you can imagine is being stored. Because as former NSA whistleblower William Binney said, to store the metadata would only require relatively small physical storage space, the kind of space that the NSA have now got in uh, centers like Bluffdale and others is so vast that the only explanation possible is that they're storing every phone conversation. We're talking audio, transcripts, we're talking emails, we're talking online chats. They're storing absolutely everything. Doesn't mean that they've got the personnel to analyze it or indeed the computer algorithms that are strong or quick enough to analyze it all. But using keyword logging, they can begin to do that. That is the ultimate scandal. Uh, and I think eventually the Snowden revelations will start to lean in that direction. More and more confirmation that each uh, shred of individual communication is being stored by the NSA, not just things like metadata. Yeah, and since we haven't done anything about it, they're getting even more bold about this. And of course, we have a new bureaucracy that was created by Dodd-Frank. That's the, and listen to this, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That's the same kind of cynical acronym as we were talking about before about the Patriot Act and these people who said that they were going to, uh, the, the support acronym that they came up with so they could go in and tell these poor parents that uh, they were essentially a support group. Actually, they were going to be uh, depriving their premature babies of oxygen or giving them too much oxygen, which uh, creates vision issues. We see these kinds of cynical efforts over and over again. And I want to, we need to play a report here. I want to give people some information about health issues because as we see over and over again, there's, there's things that we can't do on a public basis, but we can do on a one-to-one -one basis. You know, when I was in Copenhagen, there was another guy that I talked to and he said, he's trying to wake people there up, 
But he said, they don't believe me. He said, I tell them that in America, they put fluoride in the water and they think I'm a crazy conspiracist. They don't believe that that would happen, that anybody would do that because they've never fluoridated the water in Denmark. But they do that here. And even though we can politically get active and we can try to change things individually, we still need to ultimately take responsibility for our own health and for that of our family. And so I want to give you this uh, report here that we got in right after it. I want to talk with you, uh, Paul, about what's going to actually be collected up front on people. Besides Social Security number, there's a wealth of information that's then going to be track tracking everything about Americans. Besides just their conversations that the NSA is doing, they're going to create a complete financial profile of you and your family. What will they use that for? We'll talk about that right after this report. In January of this year, I sent Jakari Jackson and other InfoWars.com reporters to the west coast of the United States to investigate the reports of massive radiation spikes. Ten times in some cases what the background radiation is supposed to be. Professional groups, private organizations, and citizens alike were going out with their field meters and Geiger counters and picking up huge spikes in San Francisco, Los Angeles, but as far north as Seattle. Jakari and our reporters not only confirmed increased radiation, they found it all over the western coastline. Why is this not a national news story? Why is this not an international news story that these power plants are registering lower radi radiation than what is being found in Half Moon Bay? We had witnessed a coordinated cover-up by Tokyo Electric and the Japanese government of the cancers and deaths and thyroid ailments plaguing Japan in the first three years after the disaster. So the question was, is there a cover-up going on in the United States and North America as a whole. Turns out the EPA, within just a few months of the Fukushima disaster, with the trade winds and currents coming right into the United States, had indeed raised the levels of what they claimed was safe for the population. In some cases, more than a thousand times what they had previously claimed was safe. So we continued to investigate and noticed that just a few months after Fukushima, tuna had been caught off the coast of the United States with higher levels of radiation. Buried in reports that got little or no attention, we began to discover massive deformities in whales and other sea life. Seal die-offs, starfish die-offs, massive fish die-offs. And when our reporters went and tested the fish that were being caught off the coast of California, the radiation levels spiked dramatically. It's almost double. There's a reason I sent my reporters to the West Coast. It's to draw attention to the fact that the nuclear industries in the United States and worldwide are out of control. More than 75% of reactors in North America are currently leaking. In the past, every one of these leaks would have been a huge issue. Now, it's as if radiation is good for us. In fact, Ann Coulter and others have come out and said that we should be thankful for the radiation. The Japanese should be thankful because after all, it's good for them. Radiation in excess of what the governments uh, says is are the minimum amount, amounts right. you should be exposed to are actually good for you and reduce cases of cancer. Tell that to all the valiant rescue workers who tried to secure the damaged plant who've now succumbed from radiation sickness and died. And tell that to the sailors and crew of the USS Ronald Reagan, many of which are dead and dying now from radiation poisoning. And the VA will not give them any care and basically puts them on a death panel list to wait and die. Our sources tell us many were placed on a secret list designed by VA managers to hide the fact veterans were waiting months to see a doctor. Bottom line, it is important that we draw attention to the fact that this industry is out of control. And we also draw attention to the fact that the federal government itself is ordering millions and millions of dosages of potassium iodide for federal workers while telling the general population that, oh, you don't need to have that unless you live right next door to a nuclear power plant. They're acting like they're preparing for some sort of nuclear emergency right now because we now know that the Department of Health and Human Services, for example, they just ordered an unprecedented 14 million doses of potassium iodide, which, you know, protects the body in the event of radioactive poisoning. So right. the federal government, they are already acting as if there's been a severe nuclear accident. Does that concern you as, as much as it does me? 
Oh, yes, it concerns me not only as a journalist, but as a just general citizen. The truth is, radiation is an invisible poison that's all around us, and the levels of it are going up. It was in my research to find ways to try to shield my family or mitigate the dangers of increased radiation that I discovered that iodine was a key component and that the government was hoarding it. But the type of iodine they're hoarding is something you only take during a huge disaster, not something that you take on a daily basis that from the research helps your glands and body overall to be healthier. That's why we developed with Dr. Edward Group Survival Shield, a proprietary new form of nascent iodine. Survival Shield has been incredibly popular because of the results people have gotten, but also because it's more palatable and easier for children to take. It's not as harsh as some of the other iodines that are out there. We innovated with Survival Shield nascent iodine, and it's still available and is excellent. But we are now very excited to introduce X2. There is no other iodine anywhere near this. The other so-called nascent iodines are black and turn black on paper. The Survival Shield nascent iodine turns electric blue purple because it's from the pure crystal. You can literally see these ancient crystals seething with the iodine. If you think Survival Shield was powerful, X2 is the...